Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about extreme exotic life that could potentially live somewhere out there. A life that kind of goes even beyond the imagination of most of the science fiction. A life that could be created inside of a star. So let's discuss this in more detail because there's a lot to dissect here. Obviously, in our search for life, we are sort of biased to what we see around us. All of the organisms and all of the life we've been looking for so far are more or less based on what we see around us on planet Earth. And this is maybe not the best way to approach this. Because due to the sheer amount of stars out there, and due to the sheer amount of possibilities, life could be created in a lot of different manners. And in that sense, science is not really the perfect guide for us if we were to try to discover life. Science fiction is. A lot of wonderful, incredible books have been written over the past few years and over the past few decades that do present us with a life that kind of goes way, way beyond what we would imagine. But I think no book does this better than the famous Dragon's Egg. The book by Robert Forward that you can find in the description, and by the way, this is totally not sponsored, neither am I associated with the author, I just personally think that this is a brilliant piece of science fiction. Now, I don't really remember the details that well anymore because I've read it many, many years ago, but essentially in that book, the humanity goes on an adventure and discovers itself around a somewhat unusual neutron star. And as they orbit around the neutron star, they realize that something seems to be living on the surface. These species, known as Chila, seem to survive and thrive on the surface of the neutron star, but not because they're made out of typical atoms that we are made out of. They actually seem to be made out of nuclear subatomic particles and depend on all sorts of nuclear interaction in order to survive, thrive and evolve. And because they're made of subatomic particles and not atoms, they're also able to evolve much quicker. Now in the book you have to use a lot of imagination to try to kind of understand what's really happening because the actual description of Chila is never really given specifically. But the idea here is that they are able to evolve in only a period of a few months and become more advanced than the humans even though they start completely primitive in the beginning. And at some point they are even able to communicate with the humans, but I don't want to spoil the rest. Anyway, so it's a really interesting story, it's an extremely original premise, but it's also based on real science and real understanding of how things work around the universe. And this is kind of what the new study is based on as well. The main premise being that well, you don't really need atoms to create something similar in function to DNA. You could hypothetically create it out of subatomic particles and also other physical concepts that we're currently studying. One such concept is of course cosmic strings that are used in the so-called cosmic string theory. And this is something we're still trying to investigate with some potential signs of this being real that we're going to discuss in another video sometime in the future. Although if you are watching this from the future, it might have already come out, and it might be already somewhere above my head. Anyway, so the cosmic strings themselves, according to the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below, could potentially serve as a kind of a strand as well. In other words, something could be held on these strings on an extremely, extremely tiny level, and they provide a solid explanation to how this could be done. On the other hand, one of the things that could be held as a kind of a DNA-like information piece is yet another theoretical concept known as the magnetic monopoles. The idea of magnetic monopoles is very simple. Just like a typical magnet that typically has the positive and the negative side, or the north and the south sides, allowing for the magnetic lines to form, the hypothetical magnetic monopole would only have one of these. In other words, it would only have magnetism going in a single direction, either into it or out of it. And this is something that's extremely hypothetical and has never really been proven or found anywhere, but the theory behind it is still there. And the scientists believe that maybe there are some exotic particles out there that could hypothetically become magnetic monopoles in certain conditions. Because normally, if you take a magnet and you, for example, cut it in half, it just creates two smaller magnets. It will always have two poles, or it will always be a dipole. But because this is a theoretical paper, it takes the liberties and assumes that they could exist, both the cosmic strings and the magnetic monopoles. And if they do exist, they could hypothetically create conditions where strings with information similar to DNA could exist and could replicate and could actually do so very efficiently. And they also believe that the perfect location for these unusual, I guess, life forms to exist would be inside a typical star. 
and it would actually be for two main reasons. One is that the temperature and pressure here is high enough for these exotic particles to exist, and two is that it would provide enough energy for all of this exotic life to reproduce, evolve, and be extremely active very, very fast. And as a result, very complex three-dimensional structures could be created and even act very similar to primitive life here on Earth, specifically things like viruses and protobacteria. And because of the extreme conditions inside the stars, all of these beaded particles would then start mixing together, they would start entangling, and they would start replicating. Which of course could eventually become somewhat similar to life itself. But this is of course extremely hypothetical right now. And worst of all, it's sort of unprovable. At least for now. But there are some things we can do to try to see if this has any merit. For example, by looking at certain stars and by seeing their spectrum, we might be able to calculate if certain stars start dimming more than they should. And this means that something is eating away their energy on the inside. And that something could potentially be this exotic life. Now that's obviously a long shot, especially because in the past we did have a few observations of stars that were dimming, including more recently Betelgeuse, but nevertheless it is something worth exploring, especially if we want to learn more about life in the universe. But most importantly, studies like this really help us to start thinking outside of the box when looking for extraterrestrial life. Right now, all of our focus is essentially on life that we know of. All of the life we've been searching for, including life on Mars, life on Venus, life on Enceladus, and so on, has really been based on everything we have on Earth. It's been based on the idea of chemicals. Chemicals like phosphine, for example, that was recently found on Venus. And right away we jumped to a conclusion that this is life. But because we're still thinking inside the box, inside the earthly box, and all of our biases are based on what we already have here on Earth, it is probably not the best way to look for life outside of Earth. And so papers like this one kind of help us focus on these ideas and help us take a new approach outside of our comfort zone. Because for all we know, just like the extremophiles on Earth, there are all sorts of extremophiles in the universe across our galaxy that could be living in conditions we can't even imagine right now. Which is once again why I'm so thankful books like this exist and help us to think differently. I just really wish more books did that. More authors should be taking their liberties and exploring the universe, exploring the ideas of life in the universe, and making these extremely original leaps in trying to identify something else unusual out there, like the wonderful Robert Forward did in his book The Dragon's Egg. Something that I highly recommend you check out by yourself. But on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. And as always, you can check out the paper and also other relevant resources in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Maybe support the channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt. And most importantly, stay positive, stay wonderful, and I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye. Oh wait, there's one more thing I forgot to mention. You really should also check out the original Solaris by the brilliant Soviet director Andrei Tarkovsky. The 1972 rendition of this movie was absolutely mind-blowing, and it does actually mention some other unusual life that we've never thought of before. Although finding this movie is really not as easy as finding the book. Anyway, so that's another piece of science fiction that I highly recommend. Well, that's it. Bye-bye.